Okay, we're going to continue on with mole ratios, but now we're going to start looking at moles within moles of compounds. So let's say, for instance, I have a compound, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is made up of one carbon and two oxygens. And if I had this one particle, this is a particle, it breaks apart into two separate things. Carbon, so this is a carbon atom, and two oxygen atoms. Now, let's say um, I have a dozen carbon dioxide So given 12 CO2 particles, how many oxygen atoms will I get from that? And so if you look at this sentence up here, Let's say I take this times 12, well then, likewise, I would have carbon times 12, so that I have 12 carbons coming out of that. Also, 2 times 12, or 24 oxygen atoms coming out of that. So you can see that this is one dozen, given a dozen CO2 particles, I would have one dozen carbon atoms coming out of that, and two dozen oxygen atoms. Now, how does this relate to moles? Well, I want to scale this up once again to moles. So instead of multiplying by 12, I multiply by Avogadro's number, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And so instead of now having one particle, let's say I have one mole of these. So one mole of CO2. If I break that apart, that's going to give me a mole of carbon and two moles of oxygen. Now this is oxygen atoms, not oxygen the, the molecule. So I can say the relationship between all these things here, for every mole of carbon dioxide, you have mole of carbon, two moles of oxygen. So let's say I have a problem now. Um, how many moles of oxygen are there in, let's say, 0 0.7 moles of CO2? Okay, so I have a given here, 0.7 moles of CO2, and I want to figure out how many moles of oxygen, the atom, are present. I can use a mole ratio like I did with balanced equation, except now I'm going to write a mole ratio of just carbon dioxide molecule. So my mole ratio is, for every mole of CO2, I'm going to have two moles of oxygen. So what that allows me to do is, if I have my given as 0.7 moles of CO2, say 0 0.7 moles of CO2, now I have this ratio for every mole of CO2, there's two moles of oxygen twice the amount, so 0 0.7 times 2 ends up being 1.4 moles of oxygen, which makes sense because for every mole of CO2, you have double the amount of oxygen. Okay. Now, what if I have a, a more complicated molecule, let's say glucose? 
So glucose is C6H12O6. And given, say, 1.2 moles of glucose, how many moles of oxygen are present? Okay, and then if I want to take it a step further, how many grams of oxygen So this is going to involve two separate steps. Um, the mole ratio allows us to solve for a lot of things, including combustion analysis, if we were trying to look and see where the products are going. Um, so this sort of relationship will really help out when you're doing more complicated problems. So let's start with my first problem here. Um, I want to write a mole ratio between glucose and oxygen. So if I say for every mole of C6H12O6, you're going to have six moles of oxygen because the molecule is a whole thing, break it apart, and there's six oxygens in each one. Six moles of, of oxygen. Glucose. If I want to figure out moles of oxygen, I'm going to take my 1.2 moles of glucose. Write out this ratio here. So for every mole of that, I get 6 moles of oxygen. So 1.2 times 6 is 7.2 moles of oxygen. And if I want to take it a step further and get grams out of that, I can take molar mass of oxygen. So for one mole of oxygen, 16.00 grams. And I get that from the periodic table. If I multiply that out, and it's 115.2. Grams of oxygen. 